Ohio State hires Justin Fry to be their new offensive line coach, evaluating Ohio State's current coaching staff and what the Buckeyes can learn from Georgia during their national championship season. All that and more in this episode of Locked on Buckeyes. <laughs> You are Locked On Buckeyes, your daily podcast on the Ohio State Buckeyes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Buckeye fans? Welcome back to another episode of Locked On Buckeyes for the Locked On Pod. Cast Network. I'm your host, Jay Stevens, also the host of the Jay Stevens Podcast. It is Tuesday, January 11th in the year 2022, and today's episode is brought to you by Sonos. Experience the game like never before with Sonos Arc, the premium smart soundbar for TV, movies, music, gaming, and more. Visit Sonos.com to learn more. There were rumors last week, or there was a report last week, that this might be the move, and the move has been made. Justin Fry has been hired by the Ohio State University to be their new offensive line coach. Justin Fry is one of the most sought after and looked at to be one of the best offensive line coaches in all of college football. Yes, not just Pac-12 country, not just on the western portion of the country, but in totality in the national landscape of college football, Justin Fry looks to be one of the best online coaches there is out there. Ryan Day knew that. Ryan Day, Justin Fry used to coach together, not only at Temple, but also at Boston College. They have history together. They had success, success together with their offensive line, with the, running the ball. And I do believe that's a big reason why Ryan Day looked to move Coach Studrara right now as soon as the season was over. Coach Stud did a good job, but it did seem like there was times with the offensive, offensive line and even with substitution substitutions that he made this year, even with the implementation of four offensive tackles playing on the offensive line, it seemed like something was a little off, not just this year, but even you can look at last year and even the player development and recruiting, something seemed a little odd. Ryan Day has quickly learned you can't wait to make changes. You lose to Michigan once. You never know what people are going to say in house to you when you lose to Michigan. Two losses in a season, okay. Not the best. Losing to Michigan makes everything change in the level of anticipation and maybe anxiety. Maybe a little bit different right now going, in, going into next season for Ryan Day. Ohio State, I sure thought, was going to be a lock to get Justin Fry because of the history that him and Ryan Day have. But then there was the new kid on the block, the same gentleman that has some choice words about Ohio State recently. The new kid on the block tried to outbid Ohio State to get Justin Fry. It makes me think about a time or a time that you may have been through the mall, walking through the mall, and you see that sports memorabilia shop, and they have a lot of different things that you would never touch. But then there's that one jersey. There's that one thing, a silent, silent auction. It ends at 6 p.m. Eastern. You're there at 4. You have nothing going on the rest of the day. And all of a sudden, you're saying, well, I mean, I ain't got nothing. I got a little bread in my pocket. How about I go ahead and try to get this jersey here? And the next thing you know, you're bidding for it. You look back in 20 minutes, somebody comes up and bids, outbids you. Go, okay, quick, you, you up that thing. You up that thing. And back and forth for 30 minutes. The next thing you know, there was some youngster, 12 years old, not the same age as Marcus Freeman, but you get the gist. A new kid on the block. He's 12 years old. He's doing things for his dad. His dad says, hey, Junior, you know the drill. Go ahead and get this done. You know how much money I have. You know how to sweet talk the old man. You know how to get all of these things done. And next thing you know, Junior's there talking to you. You're 40. He's 12. And you're just like, okay, great. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's, let's sound the sound time. Sir, should you be, sir, youngster, should you be in school? Nah, nah, school's out for the summer, sir. It's July. What are you talking about? Oh, <laughs> my bad. <coughs> And you guys start bidding back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Eventually, you outbid the youngster who is doing things for his dad, thinking dad would be able to be 
on the back burner, on the back seat as a youngster goes and has a little fun trying to bid for this very specific jersey that you want. And all of a sudden, this kid wants as well. You end up outbidding them and you get the prize possession. You get that th that very jersey you have been wanting for years. Well, Ryan Day, I do think for a very long time he has won a Justin Fry. I, I wonder. I, not, not solidified, not concretely, but I wonder. I, I think in the back of Ryan Day's mind, he's thinking, there's a good chance that me and Justin Fry will be able to coach again and he'll coach under me. What we see now is Fry is in Columbus because Ohio State outbid Notre Dame. This is a report from Buckeye now on Sports Illustrated to go ahead and get that very thing, which is Justin Fry to be the new offensive line coach. I'm curious going into next year, not only how the running game would look, because Justin Fry has been an offensive line coach for 11 seasons. He's only had three seasons where he has not, well, that team that he has coached and the offensive line that he has been coaching has not had a 1,000-yard rusher behind them. In 2013, Andre Williams, this was a year that Day and Fry were on the same coaching staff. Andre Williams had 2,177 rushing yards, 6.1 yards a pop, and 18 touchdowns. This just this past year, Zach Charbonnet at UCLA. This was also a year where Justin Fry was the offensive coordinator, possibly a future position for Mr. Justin Fry at Ohio State. We'll talk about that in the very next segment. But I wonder, I just wonder how this all works out. How the offensive line next year, knowing that Justin Fry is going to push them in ways that Coach Dodrara did not. I wonder if Justin Fry is looking at this team and saying, oh, we, can we should have consistently a 13 or 14 or 1,500-yard ru rushing a running back with this offensive line, with the players we have currently here, with the recruits you can get at the offensive line and how he can make necessary changes on the field and in recruiting. And with the way that Tony Alfred coaches the running backs, I think he's wondering, hey, this could be a dream. This could be exactly what we need. We need a boost. We need a change. Ohio State's a phenomenal place to coach football, to play football. Running backs behind us are going to be great, but the off of the line, if he wants to up the ante and say, hey, every year we should have a 1,200-yard rusher, so be it. The talent pool is going to be there. The coaching is going to be there. This is a phenomenal spot for Justin Fry to be able to alter things, change things, and for him to be a phenomenal piece of this Ohio State coaching staff for a very long time. And I do believe these players, Dewan Jones hoping he comes back, Luke Whippler, Harry Miller, who may play next year, well, should play next year, uh, Donovan Jackson, Matt Jones, Harris Johnson Jr., whoever is on the offensive line next year, I think they're looking at Justin Fry and saying, we saw what we did this year. <laughs> but, buddy, we can play a lot better next year with this man helping us be all that we can be. You are tapped into Locked On Buckeyes here on a Tuesday part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team, every single day. I want to thank everyone out there for making Locked On Buckeyes their first listen of every single day. Ohio State's current coaching staff might be solid, might be finalized. My gut says it's not. But with there not being very much movement after the firing of Coach Stud and then the initial report that Ohio State would move forward with hiring Justin Fry, we can look at their current coaching staff and think, what does Ohio State currently have with their current coaching staff? You have an offensive coordinator. You have a wide receivers coach. You have a running backs coach in Tony Alford. You have an O-line coach in Justin Fry. You have a D-line coach in Larry Johnson. You got a linebackers coach in Al Washington. And I believe Kerry Coombs is still the secondary's coach. Uh, I'm not really sure since he got demoted. Um, I'm assuming he's still the secondary's coach. It has not really been finalized one way or another. But at, with their current coaching staff, from top to bottom, Ryan Day, as he's filtering through the different positions here, I believe I got everybody's um, everybody here. What does Ohio State currently have? Are they, are they making moves for the future? What kind of team can Ohio State have next year? based on the, coach, the coaches that are currently currently employed at the Ohio State University. Can't forget quarterback coach um, Corey Dennis. I do believe him and Ryan Day make a, make a phenomenal team together because we have seen the progression not only of Justin Fields, but also in C.J. Stroud over the past few years. And this is a great duo together to lead Ohio State quarterbacks. We think about offensive, co offensive coordinator and tight ends coach. Can't forget that title in Kevin Wilson. I wonder how much longer he's going to be at Ohio State. Not only is it that uh, I think he may be looking to 
be a head coach once again. I know he's very comfortable where he currently is, but he's going to be he's going to keep getting opportunities to be a, an, a head coach at at the at a level, probably a group of five level. I don't think he'll get a power five job. If it is a power five job, probably one of the lower level power five jobs, just based off of how his previous stops as a head coach have gone, not only at Indiana University, but also at the high school ranks, his high school coaching record, those two combined. It's not sexy at all. Kevin Wilson, I think, is a phenomenal piece to this coaching staff. It's very interesting, though, that you have Kevin Wilson and Justin Fry on the same coaching staff. It makes me wonder if Ryan Day is planning this move and anticipating a departure for Kevin Wilson from the coaching staff down the road at some point and just going to promote Justin Fry to move upwards in that trajectory. Wide receiver coach Brian Hartline re recently got – um, promoted, got to passing game coordinator. And I do believe that the passing game coordinator position with him and also the wide receiver, the wide receivers coach, that's solidified, that's solid. I don't think there's a guy in college football you would want leading your passing game and also leading your young wide receivers in Brian Hartline. I don't think Brian Hartline is going anywhere. He loves Columbus. I think it would have to be an, an opportunity that you just can't pass up to go ahead and be there. Some thought Brian Hartline would eventually be the OC at Ohio State. That may come as well, but I think he's perfectly fine with his current position at the Ohio State University. Same thing with Mr. Tony Alford. I think Tony Alford, we know how good he is. A lot of what he did this year was done behind the scenes. So you look at the numbers, you say it was a down year running the ball, but you got to think you have a true freshman, true freshman running back, and you have a guy, a second-year guy in mind, Williams. These guys are getting their feet wet more and more and more, and I do believe that with those two together next year, we're going to see the growth and progression and see really how, how much better of a coach Tony Alford is at the running back position than almost anybody in college football. We talked about Justin, Justin Fry earlier. I think this, this tandem of coaches on the offensive side of the ball is a phenomenal one. The puzzling thing comes to the defense. Because on the defensive side, well, we also talked about Corey Dennis. I keep writing, I keep putting notes down here as well. The interesting thing is Jim Knowles. Jim Knowles, a defensive coordinator to me, he has a task that I don't think he expected to have when he, if whenever he moved from Oklahoma State to the next spot where he would coach the football, I don't think he anticipated possibly having to worry about who would be the position coaches on the defense that he leads. You have Larry Johnson not going anywhere. I don't believe that there's a problem there at all. But you have Al Washington and you have Kerry Coombs, linebackers coach, and presuming secondary or defensive backs coach, respectively, those guys, to me, those two, I think they should be walking or they are on thin ice. Not only because they have a new coach in Jim Knowles who's leading the defense, but also because their performance has not been up to par. And I wonder how quickly will we possibly see a move or a change between those two gentlemen, or will that be the move for next season? Let's just say the, the coaching staff is completely finalized. We're going to have Kevin Wilson, um, uh, Brian Hartline, Tony Alford, Justin Fry, and Corey Dennis on the offensive side of the ball. That part is solidified. That's solid. I don't see any holes there on that side coaching that, par no, that portion of the, of the team. Did, forgot Parker Fleming, special teams coach, but that he did such a phenomenal job with special, with special teams. A-plus for him. Not really going to keep going down, down the road. But when it comes to, this, to the defense, this is where I'm hesitant. This is where I'm nervous. This is where I do not think that currently staffed at Ohio State is the proper coach group to lead Ohio State's defense. I do not think that at all. I believe in Jim Knowles. I know a lot of people keep saying the scheme at Ohio State is bad. I think it goes player personnel as wide as well. Jim Knowles sees, hey, we have to fix some of the defense, some of the schemes and schematics and pre-snap, post-snap decisions we're making. But Ohio State strength conditioning and player personnel were not up to par. They have not been. Not many people may come out and say that. I'm not trying to just be the one guy to stick his neck out. I'm just going to call it how I see it. Ohio State's personnel on defense was not up to par. Take the, take the rotation away. 
even if they played their best players, Ohio State's personnel on defense was not up to par to the standard to be one of the top teams in college football. When you add in the other issues to strength and conditioning, I love, I know people love Vicky Mariotti. This was not a fine season for him or the players there at all. It was not fine. No. Ohio State's players looked completely different than the top teams in college football. We'll talk more about Georgia toward the end of the show. But I wonder, I don't think Jim Knowles is going to see something that a lot of you have not seen already. A lot of you listeners and viewers, you're intelligent. You're Buckeye fans. That's one reason why I love coming to the podcast, because you know what you're talking about. Jim Knowles is going to see the same thing we have seen. Linebackers were an issue. D-line was an issue. Secondary was an issue. Bright spots in the secondary, but the secondary was still an issue. Offense, he's not, only, he's not even worried about that. But defensively, curious. Curious. How soon? Because if we go into uh, the next season with this current coaching staff, I am nervous. Not only because week one, Notre Dame is going to be coming, coming for Ohio State very, very hard, but also because – I don't know if these coaches are the proper guys that you want to go into, into battle with next year, knowing that not just Notre Dame, but everybody else is coming for your head. Everybody else is coming for you because X marks a spot in every single e season. Eason. Every single season, there's an X on the back of Ohio State's jersey every single week. Curious to see, man. Currently constructed. I'm not, I'm not satisfied with the defensive coaching staff at all. I'm perfectly satisfied with the offensive coaching staff. Curious to see what moves Jim Knowles either pushes Ryan Day to make or he makes himself with the coaches that are on that side of the ball. Thank you for tuning in to Locked On Buckeyes here on a Tuesday, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every single day. For everyone that listens via Apple Podcast, I encourage you to head there, leave a five-star review and a rating. I appreciate it before it happens. Head there, hit five stars, leave a quick comment and review. Thank you for helping the show grow before it happens organically with the help of you. For those of you that are watching via YouTube, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell so you're notified every time a new video goes live as well as drop a comment in the comment section of this video and every video you watch as well as like every video you watch as well. Another organic way and free way for you to enjoy Locked on Buckeyes and for you to help the show grow. As I'm watching the college football playoff national championship, a very long title for something that could just simply say the college football national championship game. You have to add in playoff. I know it's play out of words. I know it's branding, whatever. Just say college football national championship makes a whole lot more sense. But as I'm watching that game on, on, on last night and I'm watching Alabama players play, I'm watching Georgia players play. There's one thing we can take away, not just from this game, but also from this entire season from Georgia. One, don't listen to everything people say in the media. Don't listen to everything that people say on the Twitter. Don't listen to a lot of the things, things people say, the negative things people say, because people are going to say, you don't know what you're doing, Kirby Smart. You're, you're going to lose to your old coach, to your old boss. That's been at the fourth. You're a walk-on. You shouldn't be here. A lot of the things you people hear and people hear on social media, don't listen to them. And it's like all year long, the defense got praised. They stayed steady. They didn't let that praise get to their head and derail their play on the football field. Stetson Bennett the fourth was Stetson Bennett the fourth. He played his brand of football all year long. He's not. A, he's not. He's never going to be an All American. He's never going to be somebody that I do believe is going to have a long career in the NFL as a starter, Pro Bowler, things like that. But he did his job. Also, something else that stuck out to me when watching not just Georgia play, but Alabama, but primarily Georgia, there is a difference between how they looked playing football, primarily on the defensive side of the ball, and also how Ohio State looked on defense. It's not just they have better players than Ohio State on defense, because I truly believe every level of the defense, Georgia has better players. It's also a difference in how they look. And we know how it is. We're at the airport. You're walking around. You see a group of tall men wearing backpacks, sweatsuits, Crocs or slides, very comfortable shoes because they got to protect their feet. You're like, that's a basketball team. You may look at some, somebody might be behind you and say, how in the world do you know that? But looking at them, that's a basketball team. You go off, well, their height, 
what they're wearing, um, their shoes, uh, maybe their hair is not, they haven't had a haircut in a while. Maybe they're eating um, while walking. Maybe they're just, maybe they're just, I mean, you know what a basketball player looks like and you start to rattle off three, four or five descriptive words or phrases to describe what you just saw that that is a basketball team. Same thing. You go into an airport and you see you see a, f- a few a few guys that are 6'3", 6'4", 300 pounds. You see a guy that's probably 5'10", 5'11", 205, and he's short and stocky, got 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 thick, meaty thighs. And you're like, okay, great. So that may be a running back. You you may have an offensive line. You may have an offensive lineman. Um, you get some receivers that are ultra skinny, not not crazy skinny, but ultra skinny. Okay, cool. Body size. You get some linebackers that, that are 6'2", 6'3". Looks like they eat. They do push-ups for breakfast every single day. You're like, okay, great. So that's a football team. You're walking with the same person that you said that's a basketball team too, and all of a sudden they're like, wait, how in the world can you differentiate between a basketball team and a football team? The same thing. You start to rattle off three or four or five descriptive words or phrases to describe what you just saw. It's the same thing when you watch elite brands, an elite brand of football in the college football playoff national championship game there is a big difference between what we have seen between ohio state's defense this year just by the players walking and moving on the field and by the way that ohio that georgia's players walk and move on the field jordan davis is a mammoth of a man six foot six i think six six three forty is where his, his current height and weight just just a human being that you don't normally see so even it, it, even a six foot six, three forty. That's not normal. But Jordan Davis doesn't look move like a normal six foot six, three hundred and forty pound human being. They look stronger. They look healthier. They look faster. They look more defense. They they, they look more um, sound um, with their assignment. They look more in tune and ingrained with what's going on. They look like they practice. They look like they're not surprised by what they're seeing on the field. Look like they not only know their assignment on the field, but they knew it before they got on the field. There's a lot of things Ohio State can learn from Georgia. The first national championship for the Georgia Bulldogs since 1980. That is the same year that my parents got married. Talk about a very long time and a drought for a team to not have a national championship. A few teams that have won a national championship more recently than Georgia. A little trivia for you. Colorado, Georgia Tech. BYU, these Tennessee, these are all teams that have won a national championship more recent than Georgia before last night. Ohio State can learn a lot of things. Strength and conditioning matters. I think they know it matters, but I think they failed with it this year. The way that you prepare, preparing right helps you to play better than you would if you did not prepare right. I've questioned Ohio State's preparation for a while. I've questioned their strength and conditioning for a while. I've questioned their own player personnel for a while. All of those things matter. How you look matters. There's a reason why when Ohio State played Oregon in the col- in the first college football playoff national championship, there is a there was test there was player there are players that have said we looked at Oregon and knew we would win. You would say how? Just by the way they looked, by the way they walked, the indents and the muscle, if there were or were not any on their arm, we knew we were we were going to beat them in the game just by how they looked. There is a look, there is a walk, there is a swag to college football playoff teams that are elite, that are different. Elite defenses look different. Georgia looked like that. And that's what Ohio State wants to be next year. They want to have a defense like Georgia. They want to have a defense that every time you're on the field, you impose your will and the other team is scared to play you. That's what they want to have next year. Ohio State can learn a lot from Georgia in this year's college football football playoff. Not only the national championship game, but from the entire Georgia Bulldog 2021 football season, Georgia looked dominant all year long. Yes, they had one hiccup in the SEC championship game. But the very next time they played that team that they lost to, they showed they were the better team and worthy and that they deserve and that they are the 2022 College Football Playoff National Champions. Thank everyone for tuning in to this episode of Locked on Buckeyes. Here on a Tuesday, you can follow me on Twitter at jsteven07. We will be back tonight getting this show out a little bit later than normal. We will be back tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. My guy, Jeff Hunt, will be back with us back with us to provide our end-of-year grades for the Ohio State defense. If you missed last week's with the offense, go check that episode out. It was last Wednesday. But also, 
this defensive one, it's going to be a little spicy. You'll want to check it out. It'll be a fun one to listen to.